today we're going to be developing some things live together as in me and you and we're going to be attacking my game dev my fast gameplay lives right now ready go first thing on my list is get this sloshing to be a little bit less look at the sloshing in the little hp and mana bubbles it's a little bit much right stand still after a while turns back to a nice almost equilibrium as soon as you start moving around and swinging the sword things start getting wild too fast get a little bit my god it's out of control man like someone's unkempt hair render system where are we with that variable called slosh slosh there we go slosh alpha that's the one. Okay, here's where we increase or decrease the amount of sloshing. There we go. If the player is moving at all, mover. Oh, the, no. If the mover, if the player's got their acceleration factor up to 1.0, which means player starts moving and they quickly ramp up from zero to one in their acceleration. And it'd be a lot less. Right now, if the player just moves around, the camera starts sloshing crazy fast. Oh, here's where it uses ability. Okay, well, hold on. This is the most important. Use an ability. Oh, okay. So this essentially just increasing by 1.0 times delta kind of make it similar to these other increases and decrease so 1.0 is 10 times 0.1 now obviously when we swing a sword use the blank ability any of those increasing the launching 10 times what we really kind of wanted to i'm guessing maybe this would be 0.05 this should be 0.1 see what that feels like and do this when we rotate the camera to even one let's try 0.5 now you know what let's try 0.1 first see if we get that slosh how that slosh looks the, a lot of rotation happens at the very beginning because we do an entire 180 degree rotation of the camera and that is going to add up the whole time while it's rotating to slosh up that slosh unit okay so what we're going for here is less slosh still a good amount of slosh not quite the slosh so we have okay that didn't slosh enough for me i wasn't really impressed with slosh right there okay i'm continually moving quite a while to build up this slosh actually i like this good that was a reasonable amount of slosh i like it okay what if we just use abilities like crazy also not it's a pretty reasonable right we've been using abilities like crazy for great and it's still sloshing it's somewhat reasonably i like that it's really great okay the only thing that was a little bit too little was the camera rotation when we do that 180 degree camera rotation should really slosh we should be a little close to max Maximal slosh after a 180. Okay, let's see what it's out there. Okay, yeah, we kind of got some slosh going on. What if we rotate the camera some more? After a bunch of rotation, we're sloshing a lot for sure. Okay, I feel like it could be a little more. That up to point. Like when I see that first 180 degree camera rotation, I want it to feel like it's sloshing at least 60% of its max slosh. We're talking maximum slosh at 37 degrees, I think. Rotation, maybe if it's 20 ish. Yeah, not bad. Bad. Yeah, that felt good. All right, cool. Let's check this. In. Boom. Don't type it if you can yank it. We're yanking it, committing it. Step.frag still checked out. Go ahead and commit get step.frag. So it's not in our way the whole time. And I'm just adding in some uniforms for fog to frag. There, now we can just commit everything at once. A lot of today's task. Right, already got one done. Bam. Okay, let's try this thing. There's a um, cater sprite for the equipment. So, right, so we're talking here. Okay, right, we're looking at art, right, item, item bobble, item bobble. Yeah, this is it. Okay, there's that second one, item bobble up psd second right that shows okay so we've got this sort of like background that goes so imagine if there was an item dimensional item right here in the middle of this and this little gradient is colored according to the item kind that you are viewing so magical this background would be blue if it's rare this would be yellow something like that so one player mentioned online that the big cluttering it's cluttering up the ui so i have a jot now anyways what we try is this we try instead of this whole background thing we change the outline there's our outline instead of this being that the outline but it's gonna make it really bright but we control the color of it by multiplying it by a different color when we're in the so change the light you don't want to be quite all the way to white guessing about zero saturation okay let's build that that's just exported our sprite now we're gonna to go to the code animate forge item function we're gonna be in where it loops over sprites no this is the text line this is what else okay animate something item inventory item there it is where we yeah we loop over a certain uprights okay so before our zero one two Right in next two was something that we colored according to a certain kind and then placed it to the Z, Z order, Z plus I. There's where we set the Z. Yeah, this would be one above. So this might actually work out all right. So we're just basically putting the same border 
and then putting the, another border on top of it that's brighter color according to the item kind which is right here ie2 item kind color looks like we don't have to do anything but just run it see what happened didn't have to change any code what we also have to see if this works like does it feel right does it indicate that an item is kind or does it feel like uh oh wait i just realized this is gonna do this for every single item kind might not have oh hey whoa it actually worked oh this old other error voxels f size blah 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 oh i hate this error okay we're gonna go to this error and to just the and a certain failure we're gonna change this assertion failure for today's stream and ignore the fact that this because as long as voxels f dot size is less than voxel size we're okay put the same line of code i had before above it because i may want to re-enable this in fact it's kind of a where do i put this in my list it's not that important this in the fix list more of a sure if it's really fixed list optimize or less important whatever put it here for now re-enable assertion the the voxels f dot size box in plus shading worry about that another day and in model this less than or equal to is what we need it's if it's gonna have to rebuild all of our whole cache but that's okay you can actually run this time so okay we got that hopefully that works where we're gonna go view the inventory again and hope so okay we're viewing an inventory item selected something oh my god oh man oh, okay well, I need to, we need to address this. Apparently it is not quite working. I don't know why we're getting this error runtime. Okay, I see what's going on. We have an iterator into m.voxels. We're also looping over voxels f. So we need to make sure that voxels f is size is less than or equal to m.voxels. So if we do this, we could say plus plus it. And if it is greater than or equal to voc, no, m.voxels, the model layer solid dot n gone beyond the n in this iterator then break out of the loop feels wrong so i know this will work and it will stop the loop from executing all the way but i really need to rethink this i want to make it look really ugly so that i remember i remember all this stuff right here that'll save hold on it is greater than not greater than two because the end of greater oh no no here because the vector and items plus count so if we have pointer to the beginning of our item and we are to and our let's say our items are only one in length we only have one item items plus count would be count of one they are our pointer to items is it address and memory address a thousand and then we add one to it it's a thousand and one essentially and that means that we're pointing to the last element so it is greater than okay. tricky 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 codes okay let's just hope it works try to do something and we got blocked by something else ain't this the way isn't this the game developer way trying to do one thing blocked by another thing don't worry of my life okay here we go let's go to the menu and what was it we were viewing god not again oh oh also in a clue box mm -hmm. okay okay i'm gonna make min the uh, the variable n going to be a min it doesn't feel right whatever smaller of voxels f dot size and m dot voxel layer there should be a cop m dot voxel be a copy of voxels f first I'm really confused as how, how this could happen oh dot size but for the nonce we'll make it work and hopefully there's no other search of failures we also got to note this back in fast or no where were we at Big. Oh, again in the clued vault world? Man. Oh, oh, it's starting to make me mad. What happened? Model 3383. Oh, at the end? So weird. What is going on there? Maybe this is related to why that assertion failure is failing. But at least we got it running now. And I'll deal with this actual bug later. That is so weird. Some of these boxes flying off through nowhere. It's kind of funny, actually. Okay, what we were trying to do there was look at these borders, right? So we've got a regular border, means it's a normal item. If it has the colored border, that means it's a rare item. Blue border means it's a magical item. Okay, I'm liking it. I think that needs to be a little bit, little bit darker, tiny bit. Then let's click, let's commit this whole assertion failure whistling. Okay, that was a brightness or adding six lightness. So why to be a little darker see yeah, you're about there that's 39 so want to be able to noticeably see the cursor hey space banane how are you doing man going well here i'm really excited to be working on some fast gameplay items today or i've already got a few done wait no i say a few we're working on number two i think do so here we go a little better that is a little better you can curse her a little more clearly still tell that it's in a magical item with blue outline okay the next thing i want to do is make it just a little bit more overall aesthetic by taking this outline and applying it straight to that applying this gray copy straight to it and then making the border a little bit darker working on your engine and art style Ooh, been inspired this whole week so what was it that got you inspired this week man what's your 
weird source of inspiration. All right, so this bit right here to be a little darker and this bit darker, a bit too dark, a little lighter. Oh, you asked about your art style? Cool. Ah, uh, cool, man. Feedback. I love it. Feedback from players. Some of the best inspirations of all. Heck yeah, man. Good job. It's a really, that's like, like if there were a, if there were a university for game development, I know there actually is one, but if we were to create our own little virtual university for game development here right now, one of the courses that I would put on it if I were a professor at such university would be how to take back from players, how to listen to players, how to give players what they want, how to not let your ego get in the way of listening people comment on your video game. Me decade figure that out, game developer. How to really listen and let my complete, completely let my own ego go in get in the, in the all the time I had invested in all those things, like all just ego. So that's a really important lesson. Way to go, Space Man Aim. Doing it right. Oh, you know what? That border can be darker. <laughs> I'm fiddling with this. Oh my God, I'm totally fiddling. Okay, okay, fiddle away. Fiddly no, fiddly day. Here we go, fiddling away. I've officially spent too long on this one little thing. Oh, thanks, man. Glad I'm an inspiration too. Always walking away from something new. That's cool. You know, I bet it's a, I bet it helps, right? When you're, when you're making your own video game and you kind of watch someone else do it. I'm sure that's a help. Okay, you know what? This is, this is fine, totally fine. We're, we can, we've indicated what an item is, right? So this helmet right here, we have a cursor on is obviously a normal one. This magical breastplate is obviously magical because there's a blue outline. And this one is a rare item because it has a yellow outline. We've done that and we've removed the whole background that was there before, which was a bit too cluttered, made things more simple. And yet it's still clear what kind of item is what here. I like it. I'm gonna fiddle with it no more. You hear that? It's fiddling with it no more. Okay, we're gonna save this, close it, go back here and commit and yank it. Don't type it. Try the magical indicator sprites. Okay, that's the second item done right there. After the third mystery blocker item that stopped us there before that. Okay, stop it. Done. And now we go. The next thing is seed. Can't reach secret hit switch in this one seed. And we can't can't reach it or hit switch it's one world so we're gonna make sure we get we're gonna yank this seed we go to this seed the the 538 okay that's this one all right i believe the room directly below where we start y negative one so we're already starting there okay and let's confirm that we're in the right place and we'll, I'll show you what I mean by can't access the crit area. Though I have the bow ability, or perhaps if I also had the boomerang ability, these ranged attacks, I can't quite reach this secret hit switch, which would enable see look way over there. There's a hit switch. Can't, can't reach it. I mean, what we need here is a little bit of this pathway needs to stretch to the right a little. Even if, even if it just went halfway, we were, we were over here and we hit that hit switch. Okay. It does stretch the entire way, which means that we're placing down these secret blocks clear as a matter of the pathway I'm trying to remember where in the code it's in world of course world then set battle block procedural i believe where we create pathways end of this method where it adds doors adds guides for the pathways here it is the create pathways between areas I believe if we were to comment out this entire chunk of code we would have a big problem knowing these pathways i'm just trying to confirm if this is actually code is this the droids we are looking for yeah okay Look, look at that. Look how, look how problematic the mosquito. We have nothing, nothing. Entire room right here was just pathways. One is also a little city thing, but thing is gone without those pathways. Okay, that seems to be where we where we need to be. Code. Now it has to do with secrets. I think I saw some secretly open one. Here's is secretly open two. Secretly open one is doors secret one, and then there's C doors two. Secret one is backtrack or gate. Two is path. You're open door bombable. Kill bombable. Bombable. Hear it. Kill a bombable. I like that word. Kill a bombable. It's the back track one a secretly open one this one right here so if we if we're to do this man out this block that would mean don't have this pathway yeah yeah they got rid of the pathway completely so we wouldn't we don't even have the hit switch anymore over here on this side and if we shall oh, get a lot farther from here and throw a bomb a grenade out it just falls into space rather than sort of falling onto an invisible pathway okay i think that's where we're, we're in the right place so we don't want to okay here's my idea we, we've got this x path or y path thing but really what we're trying to say there well well what we want to say now here is that if x path x path 
means that we are measuring ASX and is less than or equal to path width. ASX absolute value of the green X is positive if we were on the right half green and negative if we were on the left half. So path width ASX means that we are a vertical path. Seems wrong to call it X path. Path is the vertical path. Y path is actually the horizontal path. So X path and ASY is greater than a certain amount. Let's call it five. I have no idea. And or Y path and ASX greater than five. Then do this. Essentially, what we're trying to do is extend the path. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, we wanted we want to put that code in the net above. It. Actually, what this will do is probably make it so the secret path does not extend far enough. That's correct. If we go over here and we hit the switch, our secret path doesn't extend far enough. I was correct. So it looks like we need to basically just put that bit of code I just wrote, but up here. And then this comes path or Y path. And this becomes the path blah, 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 with and is path of like greater. Like, what we it, right? We'll play. Come on, Slay. Well, PV. Hey, yo, what's up, PV? Drive? Thanks for the compliment, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. This took a little practice to get used to this keyboard, but I'll tell you, it has revolutionized the way I code. I used to use a regular keyboard. First of all, it's kind of crampy on your hands. You yeah, and look what it does to my shoulders, right? Like your shoulders get all like this. And you also can't, you're so much more limited, right? You can't like put a, God, that didn't work. So many advantages for it. So much more accurate. I press the key that I mean to press. And on a regular keyboard, because of daggered layout, all of the keys are always going up and to the left, which is wrong, absolutely wrong. You're on a regular keyboard, it's messed up. Why anybody ever made it that? You know, oh, you know why they made it like that? They made it like that because of the way the typewriters used to work. They had these keys which, and that's the only way they could get it to work. Okay, why didn't they, what did this math not quite work right? Hold on, I'm saying XPath. Uh, less than five and a X X path a vertical thing. True, right? Yeah, I highly recommend switching to a, a split keyboard. There's there's advantages to a split keyboard, and then there's even more advantages to a non-staggered keyboard. Right? The rest is all kind of fluff. I mean, I could have actual letters on these. I didn't. I have no letters, which is just I'm just showing off at that point. Right? It's like. There's no real, there's no benefit except for aesthetic. I guess the benefit though, no, no, there really is a benefit to it. Benefit is I can't actually look, see what keys I am, I am pressing, right? I have to remember, which forced me to learn my keyboard layout really well by feel. So, and then also, I don't know if you can see on the, on the picture, but there's these little bumps that I glued onto the keys. So I have some little, like, I have some tactile feedback. I know exactly where home row is because it's got this outer bump where the, what is that? F? I don't know. It might be F. And then there's sort of an inner bump on the, the row below it. So I can feel it like an opposite sort of bump where the rows I'm on. So it really, really helped me tactilely know where I am without having to look ever in my keyboard. I don't ever have to look at it. I totally feel where I'm at. Uh, pinkies as well. I know what pink. I, I know if my pinky's on the home row or if my pinky has moved slightly to the right to hit the enter key or the escape key. This is actually the escape key over here, the left where a caps lock key would be on a regular keyboard. That's my escape key. I love it. I love my keyboard layout. Okay, but I, I am avoiding the fact that I need to save. So what we did here is we made it so supposed to say has sky equals false ASY wrong. This is not going to be the right thing here. See what happened. If I switch those to be less than we're saying X path is AX, X, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to, what we're going to do is it's going to, oh, I understand. We do want to capture. So we would, do want to write that code. Yeah, that's, that totally messed everything. Okay. It's not it. It's not this, this. Okay. I think like this. We say X path and blah, 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 and or, or Y path and blah, 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 then do all this extra stuff. But otherwise, if to, if we didn't delete all that, then that, thank you very much. I missed one of these to go. I think that's what we're supposed to do. This is what my, my math intuition is telling me to do. Huh. Alas, the way my brain works when it comes to math, guesser and a checker, guess and check every time. Maybe not the best way to do it, but time saves me time. Most of the time costs me time. Probably not a good thing to, oh my God, it worked the opposite. It worked the opposite of what we wanted. We wanted to put, we wanted to put, oh, okay. So we want to say has guy, did I, hold on. It's supposed to be greater than. Also, I'm just guessing and checking right here. I'm not even thinking to understand what I just did there. It certainly saved me mental energy, but it does not save me time. So, hey, there's some benefit. Oh, yes. Oh, 
see if we can reach that baby. Oh, we reached that baby. Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So uh, question did that actually work correctly for all possible worlds? Kind of a, a heavy thing to try and ascertain. Am I right? Let's let me try just one other one or two other worlds. Definitely not more than two other worlds. Oh, wait, 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 wait a second. Just realized I can write this a little bit more elegantly. By elegantly, I mean that I'm changing less code for this. Boom. When I do that, see all those little twiggly line tildes on the left? side of the screen that were there are now gone that means that when i the when i view the diff how, how much more oh oh let's do this so now we're gonna look at this diff and it's going to be only a few lines added see we've only added four lines of code rather than changing like eight lines of code or whatever a little bit more elegant of a solution i think it's gonna be that give us the same results right look how clean that commit looks so much more better tell exactly what i did right there and in future in the future you know what even better if i had a little okay comments comments are helping these are helpful comments the open two is c door secret two which was what again secret path to open one connection between room and this is just a regular path a regular center of the room okay there now it's even better okay let's make sure that it still works and then we'll test a couple worlds. Oh my God. Oh, it could have ran without building that time. Wow. Would have saved me at least 10 seconds. This, you got to think like that when you're a programmer on a, and you're a solo developer, you really got to think about all this can save in a day. It really adds up over a year. It didn't work. Oh, I think I had those wrong again. Hopefully I had, I was, if I had those wrong. Oh no. What? Wow. Wow. Hold on a second. Hold on. It's like me. It's secretly open. We can mimic the thing below, not the above. There we go. X path ASY is greater than five. Y path ASX secretly open one. Blah 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 blah. For that else, they feel better about it. Wow! Once again, a little five minute thing turned into a half an hour. What's new? Son of a gun. Opposite again. <laughs> Is it opposite there? Let me just guess and check again for the tenth time. Rebuild again. Relink again. Yes. Oh, it worked finally. We are just barely hitting that. Oh, we also need to make sure this is based on our area width. So we need to know what our area width is in this particular area. So we need to, our area area size is 21, the attribute for area size. And where we add, possibly we add four minus the dungeon index mod five. Dungeon index here is zero. So we're adding four. So our area size is 25. We'll confirm that in map dungeon A. That's area size 21. Correct. So we add four to that. We get 25. So our area size here is 25. And five over 25 is one fifth. All right. Of course, I check it. I'm to check it, but I'm not going to. So really what this is, 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 is zero. Let's say it's a little bit further. How 0.25 times C area size dot y and this one is going to be 0 0.25 times area size dot x so that makes it dependent on the so if the size of the area gets much bigger our little platform will extend a little bit farther so hopefully that means that later in the future when i change the size of dungeon like we can change the size of dungeon right now and confirm that it actually works so that's actually probably a good idea so let's do that run yeah look at that extended one more block that time we did 0.5 and 0.2 so we not it's not rounded it's rounded down probably should be rounded probably should be rounded up Fill this min path link equals math round i 0.25 f times area size dot x wire the same so that we got a min path link. code a little bit more right okay now change our area size firm firm one last time this actually worked or it didn't change much right because now we're at we've added a round i into this might change it slightly actually what is five times five no it's five times 25 0.25 okay so it rounds down to six and before we were at 0.2 times five. Okay, so that obviously rounds down to six. So we maybe did the same thing. We're not. We're we're still time. Oh, because we rounded and rounding. No, still be. I don't know. It, it doesn't really matter that much. We're still able to hit the switch. So good area size. And right now, let's change the way this gets modified. So let's add a lot more. Let's add like point. Let's add eight for the area size. Or oh shoot, we can do this with data. Why did I do? Why did I build? Stop building. Pre-build back area four. And let's change our map dungeon base area size to twenty five. Okay, so now we got a bigger base area and that should increase at lower dungeons that should be more so now we should go from an area size of 25 29 which will extend our platform a little bit also make our 
area is a little bit bigger. Whoa, look at that. The way this whole level, our entire, everything about this changed. Ooh, what? I don't like that. Door to the boss here. Okay, what if we change that back here? We that effect. I don't know why that's anything else. It's so weird. I'm be I'm beyond this right now. We've already improved this. Check if this works in the other worlds instead of dickering around with this all day long. Okay, I happen to know in this world, we head straight to the right and there's a secret area below. So, and it also is a hit switch. I mean, that we will have a nice little test right here. We can test that the pathway extends far enough also in this world. Yeah, it already did in the past. It still hit that hit switch. Good. I like it. You know what? I'm committing this. I've been working on this way too long. Don't type it if you can yank it. Okay, we, we we're now able to reach this secret area. Kind of cool. We always want to be able to reach the secret areas, or at least be able to see that a secret area is there. When I played this world seed last night, because the path didn't extend far enough, I couldn't even see the hit switch without being way on the edge of the screen. So I I walked around this this floor of the world over and over looking for the secret area. I'm like, why can't I find it? And then I had to go into the debug and look at the debug output of the dungeon log. See that, oh, there's a secret area over here. I just missed it. And then when I went back in, I was like, oh, look, there's a tiny little hit switch way over there. So this will make it a little bit easier to find secret areas. Want, I want this to be, I want you to be able to see a secret area and be like, wow, look at that, the secret over there. I'm so smart for finding this. Me. Okay, I think the same seed where we were before the 5-3-A. So this seed and this dungeon, and what are we looking for again? Did this, this have a secret room? I missed this one as well. And you know what? This might have been the same thing. Might have been the same problem. Let's see where this was. And also I walked around this dungeon and around this dungeon again, looking for the secret. I couldn't find it last night. Quite unfulfilling. Dag nabbit. So we're just gonna skip um, exploring and look log file. No, we do, we have a straight up and to the right, okay? Log file without game, that would have saved me 10 seconds. Hit, so close the game. All right, so if I walk straight up, oh, see this area last night. Oh, I remember this backtrack gate for the, cause get the jump. Yeah, yeah, you can get jump or, oh, I already had jump, boom. Whoa! Whoa, jump is so high. Yeah, okay, I can jump over that. Why did I wonder if that had a secret area? I guess because I wasn't quite sure about it. Fine, yes, did have a secret. I can close this fast item. Oh, we got another one done. Okay, here's another one that's quite easy. I want the secret walls to be varied by type throughout the floor. Right now, it repeats the same type of wall throughout the whole dungeon. And we've got a certain here. This is the relic we have. We have the revealer relic right now, which is showing every single secret wall as is bright and shiny so we, we want to turn that off like the authentic secret wall now we want to there's this thing called get get sprint block blocks add blah 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 block blade secret blocks is a vector of blade secret range secret speed so this is the droid we're looking for okay we've got this function called gets block see how it goes it takes our get dungeon index as our index into the secret box so let's do an int i equals world get dungeon index now we've got a now we've got a set up so it's a little bit more apparent what we're actually doing with code. What's up, Bell Grander Empire? It goes well, my friends. Dude, I hope you have fun with your dinner with your parents. Coding is going well. Look at this. I got I got all these things done on I got almost all these things done on today's stream already. Can you believe it? Wow. Can't even believe it myself. About to get another one done too. Because we're gonna do this, we're gonna do int di equals world get dungeon. We're gonna, now we have a di which is dirand, and now we're gonna do int i equals rand dirand, and using our modulus of oh, we can use a modulus of block size and di plus plus. Bam, bam, bam. So now we've got a random number we're using for. Okay, so we want to change our di. Our di needs to be dependent on. You to where you look for you. Uh, okay, so int i dirand blocks and okay, our dungeon our di needs to be based on our mapping so for every oh also our direction we are our gets block is dependent on our d which is direction we're heading yeah this is the direction we're heading with this door yeah and we do want to use a get area index with dir which is getting us a map x map y and a dir get area index with dir is what we need to use in this function so our di is in di equals get area index with dir map x map y and the dir that gets passed so change inner argument to d got a nicer di that's based on this map x map y and direction and then we use that to get a random number and that random number is used to look up this block so this is important to get this di correct because we want there's some secret blocks are going to be halfway inside of one room or there's a section of blocks right bands two different rooms so half of blocks will have a map x and map y that is on this right side room for example 
and half of them will have one on the left side room. And we need to use the same area index or our, our same DI or our DI is essentially like a index into our random numbers our deterministic random numbers. So if this works correctly, we'll see that we have the same type of block bands two different areas starting off on this level right here so of the revealer that's weird i didn't yeah, i coded this so even if you have a zero it still counts it get rid of that revealer item completely and we shouldn't see these walls glowing like light bulbs bright in the eyes like a rainbow bounced off a mirror and then amplified with a thousand other mirrors there we go look at that look at look, 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 look at this wall oh, looks like a, like a regular wall okay check it out now we're going to determine the type of this wall and we hit it with the sword no can we hit it with the grenades? No. Can we hit it with the bow? Yes. The same on both sides. So it is it the same for these right side items as it is for the left side item? I think it is. Yes, look at that. Okay, good, good. That secret wall is really good. Okay, let's check the other walls in this dungeon. Oh, in fact, I know a quick way to do that. Log file. Look at our doors. Okay, that XX is what we're looking for. So we only have we only have one of these XXX doors inside this dungeon. So we need to go to a different dungeon. Dungeon believe okay, wait, what are the paradigms? Hold on. It's like paradigms in this world are open, then lock and key, then one way bridge. Then so we either need we either need one way bridge or open dungeon. That open dungeon. So dungeon four. We're gonna go look for some more secret walls. Firm that we have used the right technique for our area index. So we're randomly choosing a style of per wall per section of secret walls. We want to see that secret wall consistent for each section of secret walls, but we want to see it random throughout the dungeon. So hopefully we find a secret walls inside this dungeon that we can check so that they are both themselves, but also randomly perhaps different than each other. It may actually randomly be the same as each other. Like the server put me in the game with myself there. There's this one little issue with the server. Or if you log back in too fast, it does that. It's on my list. Do it. My list is currently about 800 items long. Ah, be a solo developer. 800 things to do. And you can do five of them in an hour if you're super fast. But usually it takes, I don't know, you get 12, 10 done in a day, 12, 15 done in a day, and a good day. Rant. Go to log Mac and look at there. Okay, look, we have a secret area straight to the north beginning. That is, no, that's an area that may not be wall. Oh, there's this wall there. We have one secret wall in this whole dungeon? Backtrack gate. Oh no, this path, and that's okay. One, okay, yeah, yeah. That's what we're talking about. Nope, not that. Oh, hey, it, it's a bow again. Okay, good, it's consistent with itself. So all of these are indeed bow secrets. All right, so let's look at the other wall. Oh good, it's a secret. So, all good, it's a type of secret. Yay, it's not the sword. Explosive, explosive, not the explosive. Oh, it's perhaps a jump speed ability. Boom, it's the speed ability. Okay, cool. And it does, it's consistent with itself. Yay. Okay, I think we did that correctly. Awesome. One more thing on the list done. Check it in. Check it in. Oh, that was a pretty simple thing. So recap what we just did there, these three lines of code. Essentially what that's saying is that secret walls can now be randomized throughout a floor. They used to be consistent for the whole dang floor. So if you found two secret walls on the on a certain floor, they would both be the same type of secret wall, which is so boring. What the heck, man? Oh man, there's more secret walls we can create. Just had an idea for a wall. We're gonna put fun list. Secret wall, like thong that just walk through. Walk through, it's been in like every RPG. Not like an actual song bringer thing, but okay. DI, get area nick with their map X. D, constant I, ran D blocks dot size, DI plus plus. Turn secret blocks at I, the default of C block. I love it. Don't type it if you can yank it. Your wall is varied by type throughout the floor. Another one bites the dust. Faster, draw secret fog. Why the hell not? Okay, let's go to, well, I know where we can find one of these. Oh, no, these are one of these. These zero, either one of these seeds will work. Now, what we're talking about there is this is the thing in raw script fog. Uh, look at this function here. All this function does creates a grid. Actually, it sets a bit within the grid. But anyways, we're kind of like creating a grid of all of the blocks in the world that are part of a secret room. And then when we fog of war, we never you we never reveal the fog over a secret area until we've actually set foot in that secret area. So if you can just barely see a secret area, it will remain perfectly black and nice and like that's what this code is. So it's a really, really cool piece of code. But I found a found a faster way to write this code. Let's just see if this works and we'll confirm that it works and all that. So we're looping over all the rooms in the dungeon and we want to enable so a few things here. We want to know we need to know the area size. We need to assert that LM size is the block size. And we also need to assert that area size that unit equals one. And then we need to also, yeah, room pause that unit equals one. So we're looping over all the secret rooms. 
rooms and then looping over the area size within all those rooms we're creating an xx essentially just the room pause times the area size plus our x looping over and then we set success is just fog dot okay we wanted to do fog data whoa whoa vim's messing up vim what are you doing man whoa what's going on press shift b that was my that was all right oh, whatever okay so fog data equals fog get fast of xx yy and then this is also yy sx and fog data plus equals bits to fog data c fog bit secret fog dot set fast fog data. it also you could also do a an assertion of sets here and make this fog dot set the first time we run it just assume, not assume, to assert that we are doing this the correct way oh oh i think i know what happened oh there we go okay i found out what was wrong with my keyboard i somehow enabled this one weird mode void best void success there we go get rid of this one cons all right for then what we did work faster because because not that much faster but we're, this code is a little bit slower because it had to call a couple of different methods which take a position in the grid and convert that to an actual world position and then convert that world position back to a map position all of that was just taking a little bit though so if this works correctly we should be able to go down here and get close enough to this thing and those should all be dark over there oh did not work no wait it did oh, i think it did actually firm with the other world i know for a fact that one works with that one you know what this looks like does work it doesn't that way boop 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 oh it didn't work definitely See, over there working it's not there it's actually working wrong with fog data there what if we did this go back to the old method the same result ah yes okay the same result okay i'm just gonna quick code as it is so we're gonna revisit this later uh, totally messed up faster draw secret fog okay a little bliss not as important at all okay solve the build run error one ignored thing okay so go over here on the left side of the screen it says make build run error one ignored and i don't know what that means. started happening the other day go to our make file make file and it actually is where we do all do make fault config would make debug call set opi fail prod scripts build page bug then we run build run here it is yeah command run client uv and four these all have minuses next to them which means the error one might be ignored so i, I think it is right here I'm gonna get rid of those those commands and we'll see if it will have this error yeah okay Okay. Problem is these command run client two, three, and four are producing some sort of error and we are ignoring it, of course. And then what is this command run to? It's client four, client pair, we build client two and make. Either the client for etc or the compare or the build or the cd to build d4 or it's the make file in build c4 okay let's confirm all those l we haven't changed those variables so ls then al build we have a c3 we have a c4 and we have a client too so we have a C4, right? 4, C3, and client. Yeah, yeah. We have all those directories. All right, let's see within those directories. Do you indeed have a make file in client 2? C3? Yeah, we have a make file, which is a copy of client 2's make file and C4. Same thing. So it might be that our client 2 make file is producing some error. But that client file is. So let's build client to make file. All right, our build run is dir. Okay, let's echo, what, what's our dir? And then we're going to, oh, let's say, let's say dir equals, and let's do a change our, let's show our current directory and let's build again, change it, we've got to modify something here. Build again. Oh, it's only if we run. So we have an error, but it didn't show, show us anything. It might be that these variables then, client four and pair. Back. Look, Look at what all these are. So in build run, we're going to go echo two, three, four, pair. So client two equals zero. Zero equals zero, client four equals zero, compare equals zero. All of them are zero, and it looks like they are full. What would happen if we did like execute something similar? We're going to to echo the current directory. Maybe that it's setting this a failure. Build run error zero. If zero, yep, like that. And whatever do this or true, it liked it. It liked it. All we need to add to these statements is an or true. So what's okay? So make scripts are kind of their own thing. I don't know how to put that, but all we need to do is just add this or true to these and these statements will never fail, essentially. Pairing some numbers and it's saying, oh my God, this never failed. I can't, I can't execute this and can't execute an or. So that'll work. Run that, that'll get rid of our errors. And also, yeah, look at that, right up. We got rid of the errors. Okay, cool. And we did it quite fast too, that's great. Okay, and also we need to make sure that if I do enable multiple clients, so if I go up here and I have clients two, that we get two client windows, still runs that bit of code correctly. Dirt. Oh, hey, look into their Dermac thing. Cool. Yay, we have two clients.
Wow, I should have had an or true in there the whole time. I wonder what changed in make files what to make that an actual error really? Like I, I guess I upgraded some things with homebrew recently. Whatever, this unimportant thing and load. Wow. Gonna time out here. Okay, I don't need a debug mode. Always takes so long. Okay, we'll go back to our client two make file, there'll be two lines and our regular make file, all we've changed is or true. Submit that. We want to solve build run error one ignored. Okay, we're going to do this next one here. Don't show load bar at first. Load.cpp. We have a function called is first priority load. And let's all the places call that because this is only called in one place. Indeed, it's only called here in render system where we set the visibility of the, the loading bar false if we're on the first priority load bug. I'm going to enter debug mode we're going to get to right here and if that oh shoot we're doing two clients okay we're there load is priority should be true yeah so one of our loaders is indeed loading priority so we have a loader one loader two one of them's the main thread one of them's not one of them is priority is well the main th what the main no yeah no the main thread should be true main thread is true priority is true that's what's returning true right there and we've got new loads got five new loads at priority zero wait new lo new loads Oh, these are all priority zero. Okay, so our new loads dot size should be five. Indeed. That's why we thought that's why the code here is not working. Okay, so what I want to know next is what happens the second time this is called. So after a little bit, we were calling this again. I, hopefully this is the next tick. Here are loaders now. We should have some different things. I had, yep, yep, we've got a load key. Loads, one item, five, five. So we have five new loads, different loads for priority zero. We've also got some loads. So, oh, really all we need to do is just say load, new loads, there's something, loads, there's nothing. In fact, we don't even need to check new loads. Say hey, loads, not loads. As long as we're priority and we don't have any actual loads yet, that's our first priority load. It works. So at the beginning, what we used to see is the end, the loading bar flashed white at first for the very first tick. And then it went back to its little tiny loading bar and went. So now we want to see it just to. Oh, dang, it didn't work. So did that really not work? Get rid of the second client. Hell, yeah. peace of mind. Okay, let's see one more time. Oh, just pay attention now. It's actually work. The loading bar at first. Ah, I did flash. Oh, hold on a second. Load get set. We need to, we need to debug it because I'm not sure if load total is a value at first. What we need to do there is say, if it is a priority load or the first priority load, then we want to return zero from this function. We need to check check the K. Okay. Load total is zero. Progress is also zero. See what happens the next time this is called. Load total is only five. So that, okay, that's what we were seeing now while other time. The load total the next time we call it. 370, that's what we're look, actually looking at here. This way. If we have a very small amount of loads at first, return zero for our load. Okay, this time we should see the loading bar are not flash halfway to a fifth finish but yeah th th there we go that's what we wanted to see just a tiny little dot at the beginning and it, that's we're done that was a nice little unimportant thing but to, uh, yet a fast thing it was a very fast thing to accomplish so we're we're done with it committed load is a little bit smarter i love it okay so don't type it if you can yeah you, oh this is another fast one upgrade the resolution of the inventory currency fonts so we've got these fonts that go in a function called animate currency or it's one just put a return statement in there firm whether this is actual function that looking for are we in the right place yes we are in the right place it usually shows your inventory like your amount of currency top right there and it does not show it right here so we need to use a better font setup well, obviously fonts font medium too we want to use font lock really get the pixely variable okay now we got a pin variable we need to use font if silly, we use font medium. Otherwise, we use the font large. And if not pixely, then we want to use say font dot set scale, font dot scale times I don't know zero point five. I think to be the right. Try it. Oh, and then we also need to make sure that our font used correctly. Yep, we're just popping it straight in into our label create here at the bottom of Animate Forge, and we don't set scale anywhere, do we? Sign scale in Italia. That's fine. As long as we don't have a set scale anywhere, we're good. It'll actually use the font's scale. So what we're confirming now is that these fonts are still in the same place and they look good at this scale. Ha! Okay. Go to a slightly bigger font. Set scale times E as much as 0.75. At least 0.6. 0.75 is too big at first. I like it. Like, right? And if we were to go said 
So the full UI, we are using the medium font there now. Back to the high res UI. Cool. I love it. That. Okay, here's another one that hopefully is a quick one, but maybe data only. All of the haircuts are cost zero currently. Take a look at the item inside items.txt for hair. Hair one. Price 40 gold. That's like a good price to me. Or dig gold. Is that helmet's cost? That would be price of 370 gold. The thing different about this, this here. And this is what's going on with that helmet was it has a tier. Oh, this does not have a tier. Tier zero. That would be the problem. Because we got this get price function. It may depend on the tier. We got a forge armor equip equipment either. Tier. Function of item called get price, I believe. And it depends on the tier. Tier val times equals tier. Otherwise, factor val times fact. Item sell price fact val. Be okay. Okay, let's see if I have the problem at first. I noticed this a while ago. I was browsing through the haircuts. None of them cost anything. I could just buy them all for zero gold. Crazy. I didn't really confirm anything. Perhaps it was just showing a price of zero, or was the was it actually zero? Let's find out. So these are the cosmetic items. Oh look, there's forty now. Whoa, gotta look up with icon. Okay, twenty. Whoa, that one costs a. 120? So expensive. It's your rad haircut. I'm buying it. Buy it. Buy it. Yes. Okay, these are fine. Oh, I want some long hair too. Buy it. Yes. Yeah, works. I don't, I don't know what I was telling here. Oh, well, you got this blur issue with ship right now. But I think I have long hair. Okay, that's great. Not a, it was not a bug. No, it was no longer a bug now. So that was, that was the easiest fix I've ever done. Look, we didn't even change any code. There's zero code change there. Well, it. Okay, is there anything else super fast that we could do right before the end of the stream? Because the man's hungry. He's got to put food in his face. I'll tap in. Character name on the menu a little. Probably pretty fast. Okay. So, things set up for that. We're going to do Forge 0, Theme 1, Menu 0. Go to the function we're thinking of. That's Menu, Character Edit. Oh, no. So weird. I can't can't jump to anything in my menus not right here right now. Don't know why. Menu, Care, Car Edit, Car Edit there. Name, Bond Large. Haven't sealed it. BC.font.setScale.font.setScale. Dot Scale times two. Change the way scales work. So that might be why that is working. Big as it should be. Supposed to be huge. Huge, I tell you. Probably menus always take the minute. Right. Okay. Well, then we should be in the right place. Curse. Oh no. Car selected is the one I was. Well, well, well. Character edit actually looks right. Okay. So there's our character. Look to KJ. This is the one. This is where we want to change his name to be bigger. But also, and when we edit. Yeah. Look where we edit the hero. It's right. We want it to be big and huge like that. Maybe this one too. Why not? Okay. We're going to do the same kind of thing. So we want to set up a font size for character selected. Find a no. We can't select it. Character selected. Name. Font. Add a little scale to that. Also, when we're editing character's name that's a new name yeah look new name boom boom okay new name all of these fonts the initials here here we go cool i wanted to see that that's so nice i love seeing the character's name all big like that perfect be able to edit the character oh that's do want to see those big now we need to offset some kind of letter offset thing oh here it is each letters on create you know why plus four no you know why just totally guessing here do that works guessing and checking once again favorite style of math Mathematics. Guess and check. Don't think. Save your thinking energy. Just guess and check. Obviously, not the best. Always soft sometimes. But I have, an, I have a good feeling about the numbers I just chose. Or perhaps I should play the lottery. Okay, Jay. Edit hero. Edit name. God, it worked. First try. Hitting me. I like it. I like it a lot. Think I'm gonna... Okay, good. Good, 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 then. Upscale the... Wherever it says the player's name. It feels a lot better because it's like you only have a couple letters. You might as well make a big. Might as well make... Okay, so that's gonna be it for today's. What did I do there? Oh, there we go. All right, made the character name bigger on the menus. We made all the haircuts. We checked that all the haircuts actually cost a certain price. They do, and they work now. They did already. Get fixed that somewhere indirect. We upgraded the resolution of the inventory currency fonts made sure the load bar doesn't show it at first solve this build run error one ignored thing you made sure that secret walls are varied by their type throughout the dungeon's floor we made sure this one seat did have a room we made sure that secret hit switches can be reached in seeds where we have a room where you would need slightly bigger platforms then the platform where you can shoot a shoot a arrow from your bow hit the hit switches we made sure the magical brights for your inventory or the sprites that indicate whether an item is magical 
have a nice border that changes color depending on what item you're viewing which makes it less cluttered visually than what used to be there which was sort of a bright in the background which kind of was a little bit cluttered so now it's cleaner looks nicer and you can still tell what items look like handle this weird assertion failure don't know how to i need to revisit that later and because there's something important there i just kind of like solve that by disabling the assertion but also making sure we're not looping too far so i don't know whether i did what i did was the right way to do it I, I'm, I'm almost certain i need to revisit that and solve that though so we also made the sloshing not so fast anymore and that totals up 11 different things we did on today's stream can you believe it 11 one of my favorite numbers wow hey let's just throw it one more time i want to look at that sloshing time 11 things impressive okay we're in the wrong place so we can get out of the there's a bug here currently where everything's all blurry ship solve that go to the world where we'll be where you want to be. All right, here we go. It's the world. And look at the sloshing. Oh, here, let's get rid of some of my health sloshing better. We rotate the camera, start to get sloshy pretty fast. Look how sloshy that slosh is. Man, I used up sloshing there too. Look how sloshy that is. It's pretty sloshy. Because when you rotate the camera, the, the, the bobbles are like, whoa, whoa, we're sloshing, man. We're moving so fast. Okay, now we've returned to a little bit of an equilibrium. And when we start like using ability, it starts to build up. We start to get a little more sloshy because we're just using ability he's like crazy here and after a while boom we're good we're reaching like maximum slosh that took a second that was a lot of lift different sword swings there to get a slosh in that fast and i, I like how so the basic basically just gets built up a, a lot more gradual not instantly sloshing fast so it feels right and we also have the so here's our little outlines they look nicer now cool okay there person thanks a lot for watching i'll be back next wednesday with another live stream later